one thing I want to review is how the example in class relates to your homework assignment. Um, every semester, there's a certain number of students that do something that seems reasonable, but it isn't going to be helpful in solving the problem that they have to do. And so what I like to do <coughs> is spend a few minutes talking about it and, and sort of get you in the right direction going forward. If you remember, in our example, we had a pizza class. And then we created an order class. So we had a pizza class and then an order class. All right. Now, we created an array list in the order class. Which is very reasonable, right? Because a an order really can In other words, an order class is only a order. You know, we're not going to take and deliver a pizza to two different people. A given pizza and an order, right? So then, with this way. Your homework assignment, you're going to do a and a student out, right? And the question comes, what has a list of what? Because it is bad and reasonable to say a course has a list of students, right? I could list the class roster and have the, the 10 or so students are in this class. Or I could say a student has a list of courses. Both of them are reasonable statements. It's not like the pizza, where an order has pizzas, but a pizza doesn't have a list of orders. A course could have a list of students. And a student could have courses. So what are we going to do in this example? Are we going to make a student have a list of courses? Or are we going to make a course have a list of students? Student has a list of courses. And the reason for this is because this problem is sort of student-centric, right? This problem is all about the students. We need to know how many credit hours a student takes. So therefore, we're going to loop through the list of courses for that student and say that they're taking 12 credit hours or 16 credit hours or whatever. So the way that this, state, that this uh, assignment is worded is based on the student. And therefore, a So if you're looking and you want to correspond the two examples together, the Examples and the core pizza. Now, truth be told, if we were developing a larger system that had to do more stuff, like for example, produce a class roster, tell me how many students were enrolled in a class, and so on, we may have them both. We might have in the student class, we might have a list of courses. And in the course class, we might have a list of students. But you don't need to do that for this example. You only have to implement the list of courses on the student. So I just want to say that to make sure you get off to the right start. Because I've always wondered, like, why is it that students see the problem the other way? 
and put, and it's like, well, that's a reasonable thing to do. You know, a course has a bunch of students associated with it. And that's true. But a student also has a list of courses associated with them. And that's important for what we're doing in this example, or rather on this assignment. So I hope that clarifies that, and I hope that gets you off to the right start. So what I want to do is I want to pull down the example we had from last time and spend a few minutes reviewing it. And then I want to sort of finish it up, all right? Because in my desire to wrap up a part of the example, you know, wrap up the pizza example last time, I left a few loose ends. So we're going to hopefully tie up those loose ends today. Finding the right example here. Okay. Excuse me. All right. So let's look at the order Java, the pizza Java. and the unit test Java. OK. The pizza class we've had from before did not do anything to change it. All right? Pizza class has three attributes. It has two constructors. One constructor accepts two string arguments and a Boolean. The other accepts two string arguments and defaults the Boolean. That's very typical. Again, keep in mind when you're building an ob a, a class, you're building a component that other people are going to use. And by giving multiple constructors, you're making it a little easier, a little more versatile for people in using your class. All right? So they could default things if they want to, if the situation calls for it, or they could set all the properties at one time. That's what a constructor does, all right? A constructor creates the object in memory and initializes variables. Now, if you do not have a constructor, if you don't have any constructor, the no argument constructor is generated for you, and all it does is it creates the object in memory. We, however, have created two constructors. How do I know it's a constructor? It says public and has the name of the class. The name of the class is pizza, pizza. There are also, the other tip off is that there's no return value associated with a constructor. Because I've created a constructor with two arguments, 
I'm not allowed to say this when I create a pizza. Because that no argument constructor has disappeared. If you create any constructors, that no argument constructor doesn't exist. Can you have an argument constructor? Yes, but you have to create it. You have to create the code for it. And what would that do? Well, that would initialize all the attributes to a certain default value. Now, is that a reasonable thing to do? It depends on the situation. All right? Uh, it certainly is valid to probably say, unless the person says that they want pepperoni, by default, we're, we're going to assume that they don't want pepperoni. So we can make that constructor accept two arguments and default the third. But it would, would it make sense to make a constructor that defaults all three arguments? That if someone calls in and just says they want a pizza, that we assume the size, the kind of crust, and whether they want pepperoni? Probably not. So in this case, we're not going to have any default constructors. So we can't call that like that then. Other than that, the pizza class has gets and sets. The gets, if you remember, allow us to access the properties of the constructor, uh, of, the, of the class, rather, of the object. The set methods allow us to change those. So our set size we can use to give a value to the attribute size. We take whatever argument we've called it, and we set that to size. Likewise with crust, likewise with has pepperoni. Whereas get simply returns that value. The reason for this is at some point in the future, we are likely to put validation in here to say, hey, you can't just pick any size. You can't type in huge, jumbo, tiny, so-so, whatever. You have one of a certain predefined list of sizes. And if you don't give one of those, there's an error. So we're going to put validation in here. And because these variables are said to be private, then other classes can't directly refer to those variables, and they have to go through the functions instead to set or to get those values. So that's the whole idea of the sets and gets, along with the, um, along with the uh, uh, setting the attributes as private. OK. We have a couple other functions in here that do calculations based on the attributes. They don't take any arguments because we're, we have everything we need as part of the attributes. I don't need to accept any arguments to calculate the bake time because the bake time depends on the size of crust. And that's all it depends on in this particular pizza place. The price, we also don't have to pass any arguments because the price depends on the size, the crust, and whether it has pepperoni or not. Any questions about the pizza class? The order class, what does an order consist of? And we've said for our purposes, an order consists of a name and a phone number. We're going to assume everything is pickup to start. So you don't need a home address. We're going to say it's, it's just a, a pickup. So you need a home, uh, the name, and the home phone number. A pizza. An order for a pizza also has a list of pizzas that are on that order. So we have an array list. Why do we have an array list instead of an array? What's the difference between an array list and an array? Yes. With an array, the size is fixed. With an array list, the size is dynamic. So we can start off, we can add stuff to it, we can add more stuff to it, we can take stuff away. And the size of the array list changes based on what we have. Whereas an array, we declare an array to be of a certain size. Well, what happens if you're having a really big party and they want one more size, one more pizza, and the array list is already maxed out? You're out of luck if you used an array 
All right? You're not out of luck if you use an array list because you can always add one more. All right? What does this syntax mean? We know what private means, right? Private means that this variable, this instance variable, can only be accessed in this class. So we can't directly access the array list from any other class. That's what private means. Array list is the object that we're creating. We're using the array list class, and we're creating an array list object. What do the slanted brackets mean, the ones that say pizza in them? The kind of object we're going to store in this array list, exactly. You can actually omit that if you want, but it's better practice to include that, because then you know for sure that what's getting put in the array list is a pizza, all right, and not some other goofy object. Pizzas, then, is the name of the array list. So the name of the array list is pizzas. And that's equal to a new array list that contains pizzas. We have a constructor that accepts the name and phone number. And we have a different constructor that only accepts the name. That's known as overloading. We can overload functions, and we can overload constructors. And what overloading means is um, you have the same function, or you have multiple constructors that vary by the number and or type of arguments that it accepts. So I have a constructor that accepts a string and a string for the name and the phone number. I have a second one that accepts only the name. Could I have a third one that only accepted the, name, the, the value of the phone number? No, why not? because it's also a string. And therefore, I can't have two constructors that accept the same number and types of arguments. Because the compiler wouldn't know what it is that I'm giving it. If I call that constructor and I give it a string, there's no way for the compiler to know, hey, he wants to set the name, or hey, he wants to set the phone number. So therefore, I can only have one constructor that accepts a single string. Now, if I give it two strings, it knows, it, wants this, it knows that this constructor is wanted. If I give one string, it knows I want this one. I have my get and set for name, get and set for phone, which is good. Add pizza method. This accepts as an argument a pizza, a pizza object. It takes that pizza object and adds it to the array list. What does adding it to the array list do? What does it mean when I say array list dot add? Either this question is too easy or too hard. Yeah, it adds it to the end of the list, I guess is what I'm getting at. So in other words, if there's no pizzas in there, boom, this becomes the first pizza in the list. If there already was a pizza in the list and I add it, that becomes the second pizza in the list. Now, a little bit of trickiness is how do we number the pizzas in the list? I said first and second, but how are they actually numbered? Yes, zero and one. So the numbering starts at zero. So the first pizza in the list is pizza zero. The second pizza in the list is pizza 1, and so on. This is known as the index or the subscript of that. It tells you which item you want. Because the list is the whole list. If we want a pizza, we have to ask for a particular member of that list, a particular element of that list. 
How do we know how many pizzas are in the list? Yes. Dot size. You're absolutely right. What does a parentheses after dot size mean? Yes. That is a method, and it's not an attribute. OK, so if we say pizzas dot size, that's referring to, that's calling a method called size on the ArrayList class, and it will return a number of elements in it. If there's two elements in the list, what will size return? Not a trick question. I don't think it's a trick question. Yeah, go ahead. It returns two, right. And you might be a little confused. It's like, well, I thought it started numbering 0 and 1. It does, but the size returns two. Therefore, in a loop like this, where we're looping through, we start our loop counter at 0. Why? Because the first element in the list is, labels, is, is labeled with an index of 0. And we repeat as long as i is less than the size. Remember, the size is one bigger than the highest index in the array list. So if an array list has a size of 2, the highest subscript in the array is 1. That's why we say do this as long as i is less than the size. OK? Because if we try to go less than or equal to, we're going to try to access an element that doesn't exist, and it's going to blow up. All right, so I have on the, the order list a calculate price. All right? Now, calculating price, what is the price of an order? The price of the order is the sum of all the prices of the individual pizzas. So if I have a pizza that costs $10 and a pizza that costs pizza that costs $12, what's the price of the order? 10 plus 12, $22. How did I get that? I look at each pizza in turn. Look at the first pizza, which is pizza zero. Look at the second pizza, which is pizza one. I do that as long as there are pizzas left. For each pizza, I ask the question, what is your price? How do I ask a question of an object? I call a method on that object. So how do I calculate the price of a pizza? I ask it the price by asking for the appropriate method. Calculate price. OK. The piece is going to do its thing. It's going to calculate it according to its attributes. The order doesn't need to know anything about how pizza is priced. It just needs to know the appropriate function. This is called encapsulation. In other words, outside of the pizza class, no one, no other classes need to know how the price is determined. All these other classes need to know is you call this function if you want the price of the pizza. OK? So the pizza does this thing, returns the price, and then that's added to this. Notice what we do. We initialize the price to 0, because if there are no pizzas on the list, that's the price of the order, $0. We run this loop the way I described. We start this subscript as i. We do this as long as i is less than pizza size, for the reason that I said, pizza's size for the reason that I said, right? Because if there's two elements, there's 0 and 1. So our subscript is going to be 1 below the size. Each time through the loop, we increment by 1. This statement grabs a pizza object from the list. Which one does it grab from the list? It uses the get method to pull the ith object. So the first time through, it's going to pull object 0 on the list. Second time through, it's going to pull object 1. Third time through, there isn't going to be a third time through, assuming that there's two pizzas on the order. 
So we get a pointer to that. We then call the price method on that pizza that we've just pointed to. Because remember, what is stored when we store an object, whether it be an array list or a variable, is the pointer to the object. So we grab the pointer to that object and ask that pizza what's its price, add it to price, and continue this to we're all done, and then finally we return the pizza. An alternate way of doing this, I deliberately did this in two steps. This line grabs the next pizza on the list. This line and that pizza's price to running total. An alternate way of doing that is I can chain statements together. So I could just say this. That's the equivalent. Because all pizzas get pizza, all pizzas get I does is it gives you a pizza. For that, so I'm going to calculate the price and I'm going to add that to the price. So these two things are equivalent. I typically think it's easier for people when you're starting out to see them as two separate lines. First line gets the pizza, the second line asks for its price. But Maybe for some of you it's easier to see it this way. And if it is, more power to you. Doesn't really matter to me which method you use. They both are equivalent. So let's look at the test class. I create my pizza objects. I output characteristics of the pizza. Create the second pizza. I then create an order that adds pizza 1 and pizza 2 to it, then I ask for the cost of the order. So I create my new order, calling that constructor. I add pizza 1 to the list, I add pizza 2 to the list, and then I ask for the price of the pizza. Pretty simple, huh? Questions about this? Here's what I'd like you to do next. What I'd like you to do next is this. Write a function to tell me the total bake time of this order. All right? There's a function on the pizza called calc bake time. All right? Now, assume, and this is an assumption, that we have a big pizza oven. So we can bake all the pizzas on an order at the same time. Now, that may or may not be true, right? If someone called in and wanted 20 pizzas, I don't know if we could bake all 20 of them at the same time. But let's assume that we can. Let's assume that we can bake all 20 pizzas at the same time. What then is the total bake time for an order? the pizza that takes the most time. It's not the sum of the bake times, because if one pizza takes eight minutes to bake and the other pizza takes 10 minutes to bake, I can bake at the same time. It's not going to take 18 minutes to bake it. It's going to take the longer of the two. Same thing if there's three, four, five, whatever. Again, assuming that our oven's big enough to handle a whole order, which we will assume that. So what I want you to do is I want you to write a function on the order class to calculate the total bake time for calculate the bake time for this order. Um.
let me do this because I want to show you different things at the same time. I'll show you this much of the order class. Should zoom in. I want to show you this much of the order class. And this much of the pizza class. So let's take five minutes and see if you can come up with the calculate base function on the order. Give you another minute or so to wrap up.
Okay, the shell of this code is going to be very common. In fact, I was being difficult and not displaying the previous example because I wanted you to sort of think through the loop. All right? But anytime you have something to everything in the array list, you're going to need a loop. All right? Now, think about doing this by hand. If you were the pizza chef and you had a list of orders written down, front of you. And they how long does it take to bake this order? You look at the first order, the, the first pizza. Figure out how it's going to take to bake it. Look at the second pizza. Is it longer than the first pizza? If it is, then time. Right? Look at the third pizza. If it is, then it take time. Otherwise, it isn't until you have gone through all of the pizzas. So in this case, we're going to have to create a variable for the bake time. And we're going to have zero. All right? Why? That's probably as good as anything to initialize it to. We're going to loop through each pizza in the list. We're going to grab pizza on the list. For every we grab, look at its base. If its base is greater than the, the base, then do bake time. All right? Oh, we don't do anything. And we do that gone through all of the pizzas. So. By the way, you don't this way. But in some way where I define the very top. Do you have the top? No. How do you know if it's declared at the top? Then top. Whoops, I only have one constructor here. And then constructors. Are then sets and then which are calculations. So this to action. What does this return? An even number minus d. You make yeah, I don't know. So I'll make it a double. Name, we'll just say does this the list of pizzas It's there. We have. We don't need it. Did calculate it because no. so uh, and 
and set it equal to zero. At the very oops, I'm going to return. Right, you declare. Now here in the middle is where you. Have so we want to through all is in the array list. This loop. What's the loop going to look like for? Remember, go through the loop. This loop, you're going to go. This loop as many. equals zero. Because zero list. We do this loop as long as it was. We've got not. So we're going to do this as long as the array. And what does that We add exactly. And would skip. All right, we want to look at. We we'll look at pizza zero, two pizza four, and so on. Oh. Now we have. We can do that the way p equals pizza. The pizza get what so the pizza one pizza two and so on. So I that list of pizzas is a pizza. So pizza. So now Look at pizza. If no, it's 
So, I'm going to say. Less than. So have been focusing on the process of The new is we do that we return Really bad. Which is All right. That's what this week you're going to
post this exam.